Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Corporal Space Program 1.12. For this video I have reduced the intake area in the configuration file for Skylon's engines, hoping that it will cause less drag as it did for our test of the Scramjet Aerospike, and maybe that will get us better performance. However, Skylon was already climbing fairly well. It was a pretty efficient climber and it doesn't spend as much time in the atmosphere as the scramjet aerospike does because the scramjet aerospike has to do its scramjet part uh, so it takes a little bit longer but uh, we are carrying 10 tons right now and we will see if we can get to orbit uh, previously we had gotten to orbit i think with eight tons and yeah so this will be an upgrade but i don't know if it's going to work out we'll probably need some more fuel rebalancing if it turns out that we use less hydrogen because we're getting less drag in the atmosphere and so we use less in the jet mode then uh, we need more oxygen uh, in order to use the rest of the spare hydrogen in rocket mode so a bit of testing needing to be done let's see how it goes now there is also a difference between launching from the shuttle runway versus launching from the KSC runway in that we have to turn with the shuttle runway. And so, uh, it's not reading my throttle again. Okay, so yeah, a slight extra inefficiency having to turn to 90 degrees. But the longer runway does make it a little bit better for takeoff so we don't overshoot the runway. Yeah, come on. It should be able to take off by now, surely. Uh, whoa, okay, now it takes off. Uh, hold on a sec. <laughs> Something has gone a little bit different here. Let's, let's try that again. I mean, but we're rotating okay. Okay, now we're leaving the ground. Okay. And we need to thrall down because otherwise they'll overheat. But we also want to thrall down because we don't need all that. We're already close to the speed of sound there. Now, previously we used a number of 700 liters per second for liquid hydrogen consumption as our ideal. This time I'll go with less and see if it works. And once we see how much spare liquid hydrogen we have, we'll be able to adjust the oxygen. Checking the intake. Uh, we see that it says prop requirement 87%. So actually they're not getting as much air as they might want. Strictly speaking. So we're really at the limit here. Uh, they're working, so it's fine. But we can't really reduce the intake area by any more than this. Okay, we're past Mach 1 even though we aren't throttled up, so that's nice. Definitely better than before. I don't know what's better, uh, pouring it on and just getting faster, quicker, uh, probably. Uh, our fuel consumption goes up very high if we try it too much. But then again, if our fuel consumption is high for a shorter amount of time, then it's okay. Okay, we are switching to Smart ASS. Okay, well, the engine seemed fine throughout, as far as the intake air is concerned. Uh, and they probably could do with more intake air. I don't think it's hindering us too much. Maybe though. Especially right now. Uh, I'm just going to pitch up more. And... We'll switch mode at with 530 liters left, 530,000.
we have 530,000 liters of hydrogen. We should need 197,000 units of liquid oxygen. So we need 7,000 more. But we'll see what we make over with 10 tons here. But of course, carrying 7,000 extra liters of liquid hydrogen is not trivial. That's more than 7 tons. So. We would then have to decrease the liquid hydrogen, so we probably don't want that much more. We might have enough to get to orbit, but we're not going to have that much to come back down. We might need to optimize a little bit, but then that we were expecting that, so... Okay, making orbit now. And shutdown. Well, I just barely made the periapsis there on the shutdown. Uh, only 30 meters per second left there. And when we kick out the cargo... 35, that doesn't help too much. Let me just make sure, yes, uh, I added the forward thrusters that I was missing before. Okay, well, let me rebalance the oxygen and try again, and also we'll try a little bit of a different sort of trajectory, especially since I had thrall down. I think I shouldn't have thrall down so much after we got past Mach 1, so we'll try again. We have plenty of available volume, but I don't want to cause the vessel mass to be too much different than what we have right now, because it's basically on spec here. We'll try 745 and 193. It sure seems to take longer to get off the ground sometimes. Like right now, there's no reason for it not to be able to get off the ground here. I'm still not entirely thrilled with the aerodynamics in... I mean, I, I guess I, I didn't change the deflection of the canards again. Let me do that in the space plane hangar and save it. Okay, we've got 30 degree deflection on the canards again now. Okay, go. Well, this time we got it off. Probably a tail strike was involved, but... Alright, we are at the proper heading, or close to it. Once again. This time I'm waiting till 15 kilometers to accelerate past Mach 1. But no matter what, it's always tougher than it ought to be to get off the ground with Kerbal Space Program. It's always, it always needs to be faster than it ought to be, regardless of the plane. After you get off the ground, it climbs just fine. Well, we're using more liquid hydrogen this time. That's sort of not a surprise. We were carrying a little bit more oxygen, though it's heavier, but maybe I didn't do as good a job this time, too. We'll just switch mode at Mach 5. I think I did worse this time. I don't think the extra... Oxygen helped a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not going to make orbit this time. I think we might want the extra intake air, because it's never hitting 100%. So I think I need to increase the intake area back up again. Uh, not all the way, but just a little bit more, because we're not getting the full thrust. But then again, I mean, it's a trade-off, right? We'll be then getting more drag, and we'll be consuming more hydrogen. But, yeah, this, this uh, mathematically isn't going to make it anymore. So, I think I will do that. Alright, so I'll tune the intake area up just a little bit. And I think... We'll knock the hydrogen, uh, sorry, the oxygen down to 192. And maybe bump up the hydrogen a little bit. 
Okay, so I've increased the intake area a bit and we'll monitor that by taking a look at this. And we have the flyby wire on and throttle up and ignition. Oh, it still says only 70% prop requirement met, but... I guess I pitch up too early or something. I don't know. Okay, well. Oh, we lost an engine. Now just wait a little bit longer before pitching up, I think. Well, that's that's long enough. Okay, we'll we'll just accelerate here a bit. Last time did not work out so well, so waiting until 15 kilometers does not seem like a good idea. Well, we are accelerating. Well, we'll see if we can get a little past Mach 5 here. I mean, we can hear the engines not doing so well. Okay, I don't want to go down though. Okay, we'll switch. Maybe that give us gave us a little bit more though. Okay, we'll see. Okay, well, we are in space. We will make orbit. And it's just a matter of how much we have left afterwards. Can we successfully de-orbit after that? If we can, we'll do a re-entry test again. And we'll call it capable of 10 tons. Still not where it ought to be, but an improvement. Okay, 219 by 148 and 125 meters per second left. All right. And we're at 68 tons right now, and we undock. We're 58 tons, so it is 10 tons. So we'll try re-entry with the 145 meters per second we have here. And I will, let's see, we're low on this side, so that should be all right. We're low in going up, so our periapsis is probably in a good position. This is not workable with the shuttle script, because the shuttle script expects us to be in a higher orbit to start out. Uh, we are in a lower orbit to start out, so we will see. I've brought Skylon down before, but we... Uh, we got pretty close. Let me just review that video to see exactly where I did it and compare and try and do that sort of again, but a little bit sooner so that the so that the plane can come back to Cape Canaveral potentially. But we'll be deorbiting with the RCS, not with these engines, so that takes longer too. Alright, I've seen what I did, but it's a little bit complicated because um, we did multiple burns. We actually increased our periapsis so that we'd have a circular orbit here because we eventually want to do the deorbit burn a little bit further along. Okay, we've basically circularized 221 by 210. And I'll say at 128 we will start retro burning assuming we can turn quickly enough here 128 degrees east and then we'll bring it down to zero and see how that works out for us last time it was 11 kilometers but we overshot 
But here we're also doing the retro a little bit earlier. But we are using RCS thrusters, so that counteracts that. I just start it out now. It'll probably take a while. We certainly don't have spare hydrogen to do anything with after this, so we'd better make it. I don't think we can bring our periapsis down to where I wanted it to be. Not with the amount of fuel we have. Possibly all the puffing it does with the forward thrusters during fizz warp somewhat hurt us. We started the burn at 128 degrees east. We're at 171 right now. And we'll just take the same periapsis that we had last time, I think, which was 11 kilometers. Okay, so we will orient for entry. Um, maybe not right now. Wait a bit. But considering how long the burn took, I'm expecting to overshoot. Uh, roll zero, actually. Pitch 40. So maybe I'll go pitch 45. Well, everything has been balanced so far. We're at 120 kilometers. Of course, balance is critical now because we don't have enough fuel to run the RCS thrusters very much. So we definitely don't want it using them. We still have not reached the west coast of North America. And of course, since we're coming back on a single orbit, we're a little bit south of Cape Canaveral right now. I'm trying to roll here because we want to go further north, but I'm not too sure it's going to end up being a good idea. We'll see. I'll just give it 10 degrees. Well, regardless of the attempt to turn, we are still continuing south here, and we're about to be over the Gulf of Mexico. Still going quite fast. Now I'll pitch up back to 45. We're not rolling a whole lot, but I don't want to take any risks here. Eh, we're probably not slowing down soon enough, somewhat as expected. And I'll try and roll more. But maybe I should go to the Bahamas again. Uh, well, then that would be rolling in the other direction. But we don't have much liquid hydrogen this time. I think we'll even overshoot the Bahamas, and that's because we used the RCS to deal with Last time we used the main engines on a very not accurate deorbit, but still a functional one. But this time it took so long to use the RCS that, and I should have started earlier, of course, that we are overshooting even more. And we basically brought it to the same periapsis, so since it took longer to do the deorbit burn, we are overshooting. It's got nice balance, though. Yeah, much as I'd like it to get back to the Bahamas, uh, we are not getting back there, I don't think. But, in principle, we could bring 10 tons to orbit and bring it back down. We just need our return trajectory to be a little bit better. It seems like it could come back down all the way. So, we can increase from 8 tons to 10 tons the estimate for our Skylon right here. The real thing will have other uncertainties, but uh, for now, I'll link the updated version in the video description, per usual, and it'll have the intake area that I have with this one. Well, now we're using a lot more roll and yaw, so let's just uh, flatten out here before it goes out of control. I am trying to turn here. I wonder if I do I see one right there? Well, it's possible. There's one there and one there. 
not very big islands. Well, I've got the engines ready for the tiny bit of Delta V they might be able to provide. Okay, I'm gonna flatten out and we'll aim for this island in front of us. Turning around as necessary. And atmospheric autopilot time. We do have the intakes open for drag right now. I don't know which island this is. But it's here. We are subsonic. Turning to a potential landing on the island. We're not slowing down enough, even with the intakes open. I'm gonna go all the way around to kill speed, maybe. Maybe I don't need to go all the way around. Our takeoff speed is super high, but we're much lighter now. But how light, how slow can we be and still fly? That's the question. On the bright side, we know the landing gear can, can take pretty high speeds, so there's that. And we might as well bring it out now. Okay. I had the option to light the engines, but I haven't lit the engines. I don't think we're going to slow down much just by... hovering over the landscape here. We're going to have to take the 200 meters per second or whatever. Air brakes again would have been necessary. The intakes are open, so, you know, they're not helping. And touchdown, brakes. Okay, well, you have my coordinates down there. So you can figure out what island I might have touched down on. So, yes, while Skylon can re-enter and carry 10 tons to orbit with the new intakes, and uh, I'll just keep trying to improve upon it, but for now, that's what we've got. I My ambition with it is to make a KOS script that can do the whole mission, except for maybe the landing, uh, on its own. And... I'm already hitting an issue where it refuses to pull up from the runway. So I've started working on it, but I need to figure out... I've told it to pitch up, but it isn't really pitching up. So that might come eventually. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.